no-till soybeans are coming up but it's gonna get mighty cold tonight it's supposed to get down to 27 so this might not be good for these guys when you're running combine and have that view over there that's just pretty awesome that's almost as awesome as watching that Mike Les guy on YouTube that is one good looking tractor and grain cart Some folks would say I'm out here doing recreational tillage, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm Farmhand Mike, and I approve this tillage. Okay, everybody, I am back to show you more of the progress we're making here on the planting for 2020 in Dark County, Ohio. I've been running a little bit behind on the editing, trying to work, help farm, film videos, and do all that other good stuff, and just no time for editing, so here you go. Since my last farm vlog, uh, we had a little bit of rain that stopped us for about a day and a half or so. And I'm going to start this video out right where we started back. And that is going to be in this field right here. Schwederman Incorporated come in here and they plowed some field tile into this field. And Bill and Larry are out here with two different tractors just knocking down these field tile ditches, getting this field smoothed out so we can get it ready to plant. And the question has come up before in other videos, why we put drain tile in our fields in this part of the world. It's pretty common through a lot of the Corn Belt in the Midwest. We get enough moisture that we actually have to try to get rid of excess water to be able to get in the fields and grow a crop where other parts of the country do not get near the moisture we do and they're trying to conserve every little bit they get. If you want to learn more about installing drain towel or field towel, ditching, uh, people call it different things, I do have uh, several videos on my channel here of Schwederman's uh, and some other farms putting in drain town fields. So definitely go back and check that out if you want to learn more about that. But in today's video, we just got a couple days worth of work here of a little bit of everything. Like I said, we're going to start out here. John, got a John Deere 8320 tractor pulling a Sunflower Field Cultivator and also have a John Deere 9410R pulling a McFarland Insight Vertical Till Pull. And these two tractors were getting these ditches smoothed out and let it set. And then we come back in with the Field Cultivator and uh, worked it down and it got planted. And another thing, when they come in here and they're going down a couple feet, plowing in this drain tile, they're going to pull up some big rocks. So there's always rock picking involved in this process as well. But anyways, in this video, got uh, about 27 minutes or a little over 27 minutes here total. You're going to see uh, all the tractors working. Got all three planters going, two soybean planters, one corn planter. I'm um, spending a lot of time working ground with the Versatile 460. Also got to drive the Versatile 210 with the Kinsey planter a little bit. So you're going to see all that in this video. And I will talk about different things as we go through the video other than that I'm going to turn it over to the sound of the tractors Saturday morning May 9th and it got down to 27 degrees last night I'm gonna drive around here and check out a couple fields and we're gonna check out this field of winter wheat I do see a little bit of frost but not as bad as 
what we thought it might be, but let's get out and take a look here. First things first. Yeah, there's definitely some frost here. This might not be good for the wheat crop. We will have to wait and see. Turns out the wheat crop seems to be okay. Uh, we did get a little more frost a couple days later. It didn't get quite as cold, but we had more frost on the ground. But right now, everything looks pretty good uh, as far as we can tell. Right across the road is one of the first fields of corn we planted. We're going to walk over there and take a look at that. You can see the rows coming up. Look at that moon. I don't know if you can see it real good here, but yeah, we had a nice moon last night as well. It's frosting these weeds here. But corn will probably be okay, we hope. This field was in soybeans last year. We run the vertical till McFarland Insight over it last fall. Went around it once this spring with the field cultivator and then just planted the rest of the field. We'll check on the soybeans here. Got soybeans coming up for sure, as you can see. And that is your Saturday morning field report from Farmhand Mike. We just hit 50 hours on the Versatile 460 here, and it is time to do the 50 hour break in service. Going to start out changing the engine oil and filter. Thirty-three degrees on the oil temperature. Nice. That's the one that we used the last time. When it comes to changing oil in your versatile tractors, it is very important to use versatile branded oil and filters. We are getting ready to plant another yield pot of corn here and we got some decalp seed for this one from Bushel Billy out of Preble County, Ohio. And also remember Genesis Egg Products. If you use Genesis Egg Products, you're going to grow great corn. And another secret to growing great corn. Wonder why that guy's not using the markers. Bonus footage. That looks like the same tractor and planter I just did a YouTube video on. Westbound and down.
GoPro claw grip on the marker seemed like a good idea, but as you can see, it did not work out so well. I do have a magnetic mount I made up in, uh, I did not have it with me, but next time. Anyways, let's take a look at the Versatile 210 pulling the Kinsey planter here as we are planting some soybeans into last year's corn stalks. This is a pretty common practice in this part of the world as far as the every other year rotation of corn and soybeans. Soybeans do really well into last year's corn stalks like you see here. Enough of the planning and I'm going to go back to working ground with the 460 and eat my lunch. You know your tractor has a big cab when you can do a full nunchuck swing inside and not hit anything. Some folks would say I'm out here doing some recreational tillage, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm farmhand Mike. And I approved this tillage. Didn't I already say that? No, this field here had uh, winter wheat in it last year. Uh, we harvested the wheat and it was planted into a cover crop. And I come in here with the field cultivator. I'm just working it. I'm actually working it twice. That's why some would say I'm probably doing recreational tillage. But there's a couple areas where uh, kind of cloudy, so just hitting some of this field twice. It's working up really nice. Uh, all three planters are going. And uh, we're just making a lot of progress. So. Um, I would say we're well over half done with planting. Probably, I don't know, quite two thirds, but I'll bet by tonight we'll be close to that. But uh, things are going really good, other than it got really cold last night. Hopefully, we're not replanting anything, but uh, time will tell on that. But we're going to keep on doing what we're doing here and hope for the best. Supper time.
Definitely some beautiful evening shots here of the versatile 210 pulling the Kinsey planner. Something that comes up from time to time is I'll use a little bit of music in my videos. Well, I've explained this before and I'll explain it again because I'm getting new subscribers all the time and there's a lot of people out there that have not flown drones and so forth, but the drones do not record sound. You can set them up to record, but it's actually going to be recording the audio where I'm standing with the controller. So I'm never like right up against the tractor. So all you're going to hear me saying is things like, wow, that's a good looking tractor. What's that guy doing out there? This or that. So anyways, uh, it's just silence and I don't like silence in the videos. So I use some music from time to time during the drone parts. And other times I do record tractor sounds separately and I can overlay them into the drone parts of the video. Sometimes that gets hard to match up and so forth. So just a change of pace and a couple minutes of some soft music during a video is not hurting anybody anyways. But I do get some pretty ignorant comments. Some people get downright nasty about using the music because they want to hear the tractor. They don't want to hear my stupid music. Well, the way I look at it, if you look at my likes versus dislikes, I'm usually 98, 99% likes and 1 to 2% dislikes. So if you're making that percentage of people happy, I would say what I'm doing is working. And the corn planter is rolling on through the night. And welcome to another day on the farm with your host, Farmhand Mike. Not quite as cold this morning, but still cold enough for a heavy coat. Nothing like a thermos full of black rifle coffee to enjoy in the tractor cab in the morning. How do you guys drink your coffee? I drink mine black. Do you guys put cream, sugar? Open for discussion. Comment below.
It's hard to go around and get video of everybody doing their thing on this farm. Well, I'm trying to, you know, get some work done too. But anyways, here's a few seconds of the 8200 and the 1795 planter uh, planting some no-till soybeans in the last year's corn stalks. And somewhere out there, somebody's going to be very upset because he is planting with markers. And I was overlapping with the field cultivator in that versatile 460 when I was flying my drone, especially. What's the world coming to, folks? All kidding aside, I did have a Raven Auto Steer kit coming for this Versatile 460, and because of the Corona epidemic, a few of the parts I guess got backordered because uh, Raven could not get them from their supplier, and I don't know if it's going to make it here in time or not. We'll just have to stay tuned. Otherwise, you may have to wait till this fall to see me uh, driving perfect and not overlapping because I'm not really going to need the auto steer, you know, when we hook the hay tether and the wheel rake and the small square baler and, uh, you know, the pool type forage harvester and all that up to this tractor. So this summer, but uh, yeah, have to wait till fall and who knows what could happen, you know, might get one of those versatile furies behind here and, uh, you know, might not even have this tractor, might just have a Delta tractor or something. This is actually the first time that I used the follow me mode on my DJI Mavic Pro drone. Um, it worked pretty good, but there was times with the dust and stuff, it would lose its focus and it would stop. But anyways, I'm trying. Uh, that definitely helps and makes things easier without auto steer and trying the drone at the same time. That's going to wrap up this video. I want to thank everybody for watching. And don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. Like, dislike, comment below. And you can also check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Farmhand Mike. See you next time.